First one. Coolio. If you don't, yeah, I heard that, Anne, uh, and actually I do. Um, she once said, oh, Russell wants to play VeggieTales here. If you don't smile when you see this slide, or if you don't even know what it is, then I do encourage you to find a copy of VeggieTales. They are awesome. Uh, the songs that they write. Uh, and who here has watched VeggieTales? Yeah. Seriously, folks, they are absolutely hilarious. They are so good. They are kids' videos. They came out in the 90s. Yeah. They're actually on video. They're on VHS. Whew. That's how far back we go. Um, um, Molly, a VHS is a plastic box that used to have tape in it. Um, that, that, if you didn't rewind it when you took it back to the video shop, you got fined. Yeah? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It was yeah, dead right. So anyway, they, they, uh, um, VeggieTales uh, are really, really funny, and I still think of them as funny. During my ordination uh, training, we have a thing called post-ordination training, and after you're ordained, they, um, they then take you on a, uh, it's a three-year course, and you go once a month and you have post-ordination training. Actually, what was interesting was that one of the training courses that I had to go to was how to take a funeral. Now, as uh, many of you know, my journey into uh, this uh, thing that we call uh, vicarage, or whatever you call it, uh, whatever it is that I do, um, was a really unusual journey in that I was a vicar before I was even ordained, which is like Anglican Church don't do that sort of thing. But um, anyway, the, the gods laughed and it happened that I ended up being vicar of uh, Diamond Harbour and of Mount Herbert. And one of the things within our training was that we had to go and find out how funerals are taken. We visited funeral homes and went behind the scenes and all that. So we, but we had to learn the protocols and the processes of taking funerals. Now, the reason I'm mentioning that is because I had to get one of my retired clergy to take a funeral for me because the day that the funeral was due to happen in the parish, I had to go and learn how to take a funeral. And so it was all sort of uh, all over the place, but... Uh, that was what post-ordination training was. Now, we had a, a lady there um, who came to visit us named Carolyn, Carolyn Robertson. She was Murray Robertson's daughter, actually. So anyway, Carolyn was there, and she showed us a clip from Shrek. Who's seen Shrek? Okay, most of us have seen Shrek. Now, I can't remember the, in the beginning part of the, the clip. It was Donkey and Shrek having a conversation. You can imagine uh, the conversation with Donkey uh, and Shrek. And they were talking about what they were going to they were gonna get together and they were going to have a good time and they were going to stay up all night. So I can't remember what the first part, but the end part was this. And then in the morning, we'll wake up and we'll have waffles and we'll tell manly stories. Right? And we all laughed. We thought this was absolutely hilarious as she showed us this clip. But here's the thing. She then said to us, that's a kid's movie. It's a kid's movie. So why is we, as adults, laughing at it? Because somehow, however clever the writers are for the Shrek movie, are able to make it funny for both the little tots and us as adults. And what she was trying to show us was how, therefore, do we get it so wrong when it comes to a sermon? How do we get it so wrong? That actually, more often than not, the kids are taken out because the sermon's, the, the sermon's going to be more towards the adults. I don't know how to do the cross-generational sermon, but boy, I wish I did. I really wish I did. We kind of get to it with Messy Church, to do a cross-generational thing, um, and, but it's not as easy as it might look. Uh, so I'm just saying that actually sometimes maybe um, uh, we need to recognise that uh, actually we should still be kids. See, what she was saying to us was, so what was the problem with preachers trying to grapple with reaching cross-generations is it's not the problem, the problem didn't seem to be, Carolyn said, with the children. The problem seems to be with the growing ups rather than with children. 
And so I've put here, maybe we growing ups need to pull ourselves down a peg or two. Maybe we need to stop telling people, grow up, you're acting like a child. I would love someone to come up to me and say, really, I mean, our kids did, didn't they? Josh says to me, oh, grow up, Dad, you're acting like a jolly 12-year-old. And, um, and I said, give me three reasons why I should. And he couldn't. So I'm quite happy with that. And somebody else said that you need to grow up. And I said, why should I need to grow up? I've never been this age before. So I just am who I am. And maybe becoming an adult shouldn't be the paramount goal in life. Maybe sometimes we actually need to just let go and still be a kid. Remember there's that famous thing that says, um, dance like nobody's watching. Right? Sing like nobody's listening. Actually just chill out. Stop trying to be so grown up. There's nothing wrong with having a bit of a laugh. I can almost hear the cucumber, Larry the cucumber. There you go. Larry the cucumber. I can almost hear his voice. It's good stuff. And we just need to maybe grow down. Grow down. I think that's something that we should try. I'm going to raise that at the AGM. That's going to be our, that's going to be our thing next year. We're, 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 going to, we're not going to be intentional and... Um, uh, and that, we're going to grow down. Because my message this morning is focusing on two words. What two words do you think I'm going to focus on today that are so important? Get together in groups of three or four. What are the two words that you think that are so important? Two words. Two words that are so important. Two, I'll give you a hint. Next slide. Here's the hint. What is today? What are the two words that are so important? Talk amongst yourselves. Okay. So who can tell me what those two words would be? Father's Father's love. Father's love. Anyone else? Father's love. Father's love. Abba Father, our Father, acceptance and kindness, that's three words, but acceptance, ki- acceptance and kindness, you're a honey girl, thank you, thank you, yeah, thank you, that's a good one, yeah, anyone else, Father, Son, what was that one, role model, all very good answers. There are two words that give us hope. There are two words that give us confidence. They are two words that give us a knowledge of belonging. Not just a sense or an indicator even, but a secure knowledge of belonging. They are two words that speak of a collective inclusion into the greatest security and shelter imaginable. The security, the acceptance, the welcome, and a place to belong that we can call family and far now. What are these two words? What are those two words? You know them and you speak them often. When you hear them, some may feel a strong emotion. Others may even want to give a sigh of relief as these two words sink in. And those two words are, thanks Sandy, our Father. Our Father. These two words, I believe, speak to us of all we will ever need. Belonging in the family of the Most High God, the God who created you, who includes you in his family, refers to you as a child, which means that he is our father. In this day and age, to get up hung up on gender is a method of the devil, and I rebuke that here this morning. Listen, and I mean really listen here. If it was good enough, For Jesus to call us 
brothers and sisters, and then refer to Heavenly God as Father, then it's good enough for me and it should be good enough for you. I acknowledge that to some, their earthly fathers are not such a good representation of our loving Heavenly Father. When my earthly father passed away in 1990, I struggled with some of the negative aspects of his actions towards me and the larger-than-life personality that he exhibited in public. Note, I did not pick up on any of the traits of my father. (laughs) But Dad certainly had a larger-than-life personality. It got so messy in my head just after Dad died that I had to go to my vicar and ask, <coughs> excuse me, and ask for his help in how I was to remember my dad and how I was to remember him in some way that my dad would make sense to me as an adult. And John Wilson said this, Russell, you have two choices. You really only have two choices. And he said, the first choice is that your dad didn't appreciate you. Maybe, um, He wanted to make your life difficult because, just maybe, his upbringing was difficult and he could get some sort of weird payback. Maybe that's why your dad treated you the way that he did. Or the other, the only other um, option that you have is that your dad loved you and made mistakes. That your dad loved you but made mistakes. And I chose that my dad loved me and he made some mistakes in the same way that I have done exactly the same thing with my kids and my kids love me and I know that uh, sorry and I love my kids and I know that they love me and that we see through that because we're all broken and fallen so as a father I love my children and I know that I've made my mistakes and I trust that they will see past my mistakes and know my love for them and yes I do acknowledge that some had less than ideal father figures, but I still do not believe that it is enough for us to have some mishmash, gender-neutral creator of this incredible universe. My God, the next thing that will, that will happen if this carries on the way it is, is that we will be bullied into changing God's pronouns. Well, not here, friends and certainly not on my watch. He is Father God. If you get over it. He is Father God. To consider God in any other sense than Father God, as I believe, heading downhill on a slippery slope on roller skates toward denying other truths of Scripture and arrogantly thinking that we know better than the honour our very Saviour and Lord that we are worshipping this morning gave to Papa God. And so I'm going to honour two people here, Daryl and Joan, who regularly refer to, to God as Papa God. And I want to thank you both for the reminder that he is Abba Father. He is Daddy. And he loves us and wants us sitting on his knee so he can give us a cuddle. So let's look at the two words. The first one is our. Our speaks to me of corporate. God is not your father, well, although he is, and he's not my father, although he is. In the greatest sense, he is our father. And all that goes with that. Imagine, if you will, saying, your father who art in heaven. Well, you've just precluded yourself from the family of God. Or worse, say, my Father who art in heaven. So you've just precluded everybody else who's in the family of God. That is uh, uh, the arrogance of humanity exposed, I believe, if we went down that track. Jesus knew that when he taught his disciples and through them it came to us. Jesus knew that we were community because he spoke of community so many times. I looked them up in Scripture. There's hundreds of them. He talked about heavenly hosts, for example. 10,000 upon 10,000 singing hallelujahs to the Lamb. Got any idea how loud that is? Don't talk how loud 
about how loud music is in church, if you get 10,000 upon 10,000 singing, it'll be amazing. It'll be amazing. I have sheep of another sheepfold, Jesus says. So he's speaking of community elsewhere that um, he is uh, working with and wanting to reach. So it's not all about the individuals. And yet, here's the juxtaposition. To God it is. Because he sees you. He loves you. He has the best for you. He goes into battle for you. Jesus went to the cross for you. Did you know that it's written down in Scripture, forgive them for they know not what they're doing, and the reason the word them is in there is because they didn't have time to write down everybody's names? Do you know that? Including your name? John actually said there's not enough books. For God so loved you that he sent his one and only son. Get your head around that, folks, because that is hugely important. Not this corporate, untouchable world. It's just easier to write that. God wants to protect you. My kids didn't understand it when I shared, shared this with them this morning. Um, but, you know, Jesus is our shepherd, right? Scripture says that. And we are the flock, right? We're the sheep. And the irony is not lost on me. If God loves you and sees you and has the best for you and goes into the battle for you, what do you call sheep? Yous. So, irony's not lost. I thought that was deep and meaningful. That's very deep. That's something for you to ponder for the rest of the afternoon. God talks about yous. No, not like they say it in Auckland, use, oh, use follows. Um, but like sheep, here's the thing. Sheep is both singular and corporate. It's both singular and corporate. So don't think when we talk about the corporate that God doesn't see the individual because he's got your name written on the palm of his hand. Your name is on, on his lips. All the time. That's why he's our father. A picture that should speak to us of strength. It also should remind us of someone who instructs and guides and shares skills with his children. I think one of the saddest things that has come out from me being a father as my son and daughter-in-law are building a house is that I didn't share with my son the carpentry um, um, tricks and, and way to do things that my father shared with me because I've been able to renovate, I don't know how many houses we've renovated, but I've been able to renovate houses and I like to think that I'm pretty handy with a hammer and a saw, but I never shared that with my son and I feel sad now that I haven't done that, but there have been others like their builders and their plasterers and that who have shared with them and they're doing a wonderful job of finishing this house off. But our father God shares his skills with his kids. He also, share, he also gives us security and intimacy. Not only with him, but because he loves us, then collectively we can love each other. Yeah? Because God first loves us, then we can love each other with the love that he shows to us, which is non-judging, which is non-poking people in the eye because they get it wrong. It's actually saying, how can I help? How can I inform? How can I clarify what you thought I think I said? What you thought... I think, I thought I said, I think, whatever, right? Here we go. He is our father and he loves us all as his children. His children, all of us, one family, one family with an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-protecting and all-loving, heavenly, eternally there, always was and always will be there, a jealous and protective kind of father. You know what? Don't mess with God's kids. Because the enemy did, and he hasn't got a bright future. So don't mess with God's kids. And who are God's kids? Have a look around you this morning. 
and do not discount one heartbeat, one breath, or one person. And saints, here's the big challenge. Also have a look at who you see during the coming week because they's God's kids as well. Don't mess with them. Encourage them. Tell them of the love that the Father has for them because the enemy has blinded so many. Praise the Lord that you have encountered the living God and he's opened your eyes to the truth. There are many out there that it hasn't happened. We have the good news. So we need to share it with others. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you that you have not left us or forsaken us. That even when we turned our back on you, you welcomed us back into your family. Back into the very throne room of God. And then recognizing, Lord, that there is a whole uh, uh, community out here that don't have that knowledge. How can they not believe in something that they haven't heard of? So Lord, help us to share the good news of the kingdom, which is what the, which is what the disciples shared pre the cross. They shared the good news of the kingdom being near and a God who loves them so much. Help us to share that and bring that. Help us to welcome people in in the way that we were welcomed in. And we pray, Father, that your name will be glorified, that your kingdom will come, that your church will grow and will be the catalyst for the change that is desperately needed in this nation. Come, Holy Spirit, speak with us. And happy Father's Day, God. We love you. Amen.